Hey everyone, welcome back. And today, let's take a break from the FUD, the fear unrest, whatever the FUD stands for, uh, in the crypto world, in the uh, crypto uh, market today. Things are hovering about what thirty thousand for Bitcoin, two thousand for Ethereum, and uh, I'm still mining. I now switched back over to two miners where I mine at ETH, Ethereum, get paid out in Bitcoin. Uh, about a 1.45 giga hash, getting about 30 bucks a day. So it's down from 50 bucks a day. So not quite half, but, uh, you know, it's noticeable, but I'm still chugging on. So let's just talk about something completely different. Uh, let's go, let's go into this article. I thought it was pretty well decently laid out and it made some good points, but, uh, it's good to know. People always ask, does crypto mining damage a GPU? I'll tell you one thing, I dropped a few and they still work, so who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Let's just go through it. Yeah, taking a fear from the markets is a good thing. Sometimes you just got to walk away and uh, just do other things and forget about this stuff for a while. Yeah, so anyway, this this article is new, May 21st, 22, from Tech News Today. So many websites out there putting out stuff. Yeah. Uh, now they're all talking about if you're considering using your GPU to mine crypto, consider whether it's worth the strain on the device and the electricity costs compared to what you'll make. The article makes very good points. Some of it's common sense, but it actually makes good points. You can't. I'm, I'm glad they put it out there, to be honest. Uh, your car does run nonstop mining. You have to watch the temperatures. You have to watch the memory temps. Each card is different. Notoriously, the 3070 Ti runs hot. The 3080 Ti's, the memories run hot. The memories. So what does that mean? Well, people will replace the paste. They'll pull the card apart, the heat sinks, replace the thermal paste, replace the thermal pads at a cost. And uh, most times it doesn't really make a difference. These cards are poorly designed sometimes to handle all the heat. And uh, yeah, and they probably weren't meant for mining to be running at certain uh, performance levels like you do with your overclocks and all that stuff. And even, 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 even when you lower the overclocks, do a lower hash rate, do a lower voltage setting, like a lock in the core clock, uh, you will still get hot memory. So I tried everything. Uh, you'll still get hot memory. Uh, let's just go ahead and say the solution there is copper. Copper for the price is comparable to thermal pads and it's pretty much one and done. You put the copper in there, boom, put the paste around it. The paste will probably bake off in a little bit. I don't know how long, but again, the copper seems to really lower the memory temperatures on the GPUs. Don't buy thermal pads. Please don't waste your money. Just get the copper, pay, pay what it costs. Sometimes they don't even make the uh, copper templates for your GPU. I'm cutting out my own for the, uh, Asus Tough Gaming. I'm just cutting out strips of copper to cover the memory, and I'm waiting for paste right now. I got one less, one less, one last GPU Asus Tough Gaming that is at uh, 108 now. It's just driving me nuts. The other two are down below 100. I did myself. I wrapped the, uh, put Captain tape around the memory just in case the copper slipped or something when it sh uh, short out a resistor and uh, so forth. Again, a cheap little DIY, uh, but you can also go to Cool My GPU and buy them as well, but not for certain models. So that's why I did the DIY myself, just to see if I could do it, because uh, the risk was worth the reward, because the cards, the cards were burning over 100 on the memory. So anyway, this is a good consideration this article is pointing out. The duration the cards run and the temperatures will basically break down the card over time. Um, yeah, but whereas you play a video game, of course, they get hot, they heat up, but again, then you stop playing a game, the card will go back to a normal state and have a chance to rest, you could say, and uh, and so forth. So anyway, let's just go through some of the points here. Uh, they're, they're just kind of giving newbies a sense of what is crypto mining. You can mine your GPU and any other graphics card hooked into the system. Uh, let's see, you can uh, generate hash strings by solving problems to do with transactions made on the network. Boiled down, your computer does calculations and gets paid for doing them on a mining pool. You share the rewards for doing this. Your GPU does the hard work like mining. It generates heat. Heat is the issue, exactly. It is, heat is the issue with this GPU mining. In hindsight, 
I'll be honest, I would have not gone into GP mining. I would have probably paid a hosting service where you go and you uh, go to a um, server farm, a uh, server building, a place that has the Bitcoin machines. And I would have just maybe bought one of those, have them manage it, have them house it, have them deal with the heat, the electricity and paid my share and let them deal with the headache and just to get the Bitcoin. And or having said that, the way the market is now, you may be better off just taking the money you're spending in electricity and managing that heat based on your AC and airflow and all that stuff and buying the Bitcoin outright. You got to look at the cost benefit analysis. Sure, it's fun to play with the hardware. It's interesting to get the hardware. But again, the prices of GPUs were scalper prices. There was such high demand and it was hard to even get a GPU. Um, so it's brutal. So I don't know. You can take the money and just invest it. Maybe the better solution right now with the way the uh, crypto market's going, the GPU market's going. And there's another thing looming over the horizon, which we all talk about, is the Ethereum merge, the proof of stake, the move from proof of work where you do the mining and get paid out to the proof of stake where, no, where uh, mining is no longer required. And there's a big reason for that. A lot of the pre-mine Ethereum is held by devs and other people and they do it at proof of stake and they'll start making a lot more money staking. Uh, yeah, so reasons for it, but once uh, Ethereum goes to proof of stake, it's probably gonna crash crypto or crash Ethereum because no one's gonna care anymore. And uh, then people are gonna have to find another coin. GPUs are gonna become, un become unprofitable and maybe just become doorstops for a while. Maybe just have to turn off your rigs sit back and uh, maybe CPU mine or just maybe not do anything at all. It depends how much your electric bill is. That's a big problem. Anyway, that's enough about that rant. Uh, let's see. However, your GPU and CPU will get a heavy workout when mining crypto, which is the uh, reason you pick the right components. Yeah, when you mine crypto, your card is running on very high settings at almost all times. I don't give it a break. I run these cards to keep making me uh, making me my crypto. I want to get my payouts. Uh, yeah, your GPU doesn't get a chance to cool down and work at a slower pace. Of course, this increased burnout on your hardware. And they say, why use GPUs? Uh, let's see. The faster the work is done, the more cryptocurrency a given system can mine. Since it can take a long time to earn crypto during this process, it's crucial to have the most efficient method possible. If you don't, you're probably not making as much money as you need to be to maintain the system. Uh, crypto mining started with CPUs, and then it, it switched over to GPUs, graphics cards, because they can handle the uh, performance, the calculations, uh, just faster, better. There is still CPU mining. You can make a buck or so a day, depending on what you're mining. But it did migrate from, you know, Bitcoin mining started at CPUs. Now you can do ASICs. Oh, we got a call. Hey, it's the Bitcoin club. You can do ASICs, you can do CPU, you can do GPU. You can use your CPU to mine certain coins to get paid out in Bitcoin. There's lots of ways to do things. Uh, let's see, heat and GPUs. There's uh, many ways you can damage your GPU. These are heat and uptime. Makes sense because you're constantly cooking these cards and that's why you're gonna have to go and uh, if you are getting high temperatures, put better airflow and then you know put some copper shims, copper plates on the memory to dissipate that heat. Uh, let's see. There's very high temperature. While it may be safe for the GPU, the heat still increases the wear on it. At a specific temperature that may damage a unit, it will actually shut down the, uh, to protect itself. Yeah, it's like thermal throttling. And one card I know was getting hot in the memory and it would just start flaking out and then the miner would crash. And I realized, oh, geez, this thing's just getting hot. Took it out of the rig, ripped it apart, put on, put in the copper, bam, it's been running great ever since. All right, running it, running it at a high and safe temperature for a long time can still warp the unit, damage the internals, and dry up the thermal paste. True. These will eventually lead to the GPU dying. Uh, the no graphics card will last forever. Yeah, the thermal paste, when you take one of these off and you look at the factory thermal paste, most times they put the minimal thermal paste on the chip and the memory. The, the thermal pads are not the greatest and they crumble. It's just the heat deteriorates these things, the paste and the thermal pads over time. 
That's why I like the copper solution, man. Copper is one of the best metals for uh, handling heat, heat transfer. Trust me, I touched copper when it was hot. Oh, that was stupid. Don't ever do that. Oh, let's see the uptime. Uh, Minor crypto is how much the graphics card is in use. You're always using these things. You're always burning them hot. You're always cooking these things. You're using them. You use them like a running mule. You're beating these cards to get you that yummy crypto. And it uh, puts a wear and tear on it. Up, yeah, so uptime. Uptime is actually a more significant problem for GPUs used to mine crypto than heat. Interesting. You can lower the heat by adjusting the settings on the graphics card. However, many miners prefer to keep their cards active as much as possible to maximize their crypto payments. Uh, you can do things to protect your GPU and extend its life on mining crypto. Yeah, use the right settings. You can, but you want to maximize your hash rate. You can run efficient. You can uh, do the hash to watt ratio, trying to get the most, of, most efficiency out of your cards. And that's the most recommended approach. You don't want to be maxing out the watts on your GPU and getting the hash rate. You want to kind of maybe set the overclock, the lock core clock, uh, so you don't go above a certain voltage just to regulate that. Keep the power usage down while getting an acceptable hash rate to burn efficiently. One of the most efficient cards I have is the AMD 6600 XT. They uh, mine about 32 mega hash, but they only use under 70 watts of power. It's, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And the efficiency, the efficiency does reflect that. So here they are saying replace your thermal paste. You can pop them apart if, you're, if you see on your uh, software temperatures, the mining temperatures, your things are getting hot, the memory is getting hot. Time to look at the uh, thermal place. And I don't do the pads, man, on the memory. You keep the pads around the heat sink on the other components, but around the memory, the little black um, Texas Instrument memory chips. Most of them are TI, Texas Instruments chips. That's where you want to put the copper. You can buy the copper plates that go right over and fit right over the memory. You put paste on both sides, blammo. Drop, you, you can drop your memory temperatures by up to 40 degrees Celsius. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, keep a close eye on attempts and know when to replace the thermal paste or pads. Again, do the look at copper. Look at copper. GPU copper pad uh, replacement. Copper uh, plates. All right, keep it clean. Yes. Yes. Uh, these, little, these little bastards will collect lots of dust bunnies and, and uh, clog up the actual fins in the heat sink. So you want to, you know, when you're doing a thermal pad for the first time, you want to like uh, get a rag, wipe them down, take the cart out of the rig, go outside and uh, blow these things out with uh, appropriate compressed air. You don't want compressed air with moisture in it or that can generate moisture because what you're basically going to be doing is forcing moisture into that cart and that's, that's not good. Do not do that. So if you're using any kind of compressed air, make sure it's approved for electronics or you have a, a something on the nozzle, which will um, will basically prohibit the moisture from coming out. I think there's something on a compressor you can buy the right attachment, the right nozzle. Uh, yeah, you gotta blow these things out. Get the dust off the fans because the dust will accumulate on the blades on the fans, and that's just adding more uh, uh, friction, more drag, you could say, on these on these blades, and just making the card work harder burning more uh, power, and then the fins are just collecting dust bunnies. Yeah, blow those things out. You may have to get a little tool in there to scrape out the dust bunnies. But yeah, look at them, eyeball them, and uh, yeah, definitely take care of the uh, the cars that are dusty. They take a lot of abuse, but why, why get to the point where they become caked on? And it's just not good. Uh, let's see. If your system is dusty somewhere, make sure you open it up and dust it regularly. Don't leave it in, on your components. I have most of my rigs in a grow tent. I will vacuum out the grow tent too on the bottom. You'll see the dust collect. Uh, you can put filters and stuff on the intakes the uh, into the tent. But again, you're restricting airflow. It's a, it's a trade-off. I want the airflow right now. I can clean the cars myself. I want airflow. Why? Airflow is king and getting that heat out of that grow tent and outside. Get that heat off those cars. If I'm restricting airflow, like with an HVAC with the wrong filter, you're putting a lot of work on that um, that unit, and uh, you're just not getting the right airflow. So yeah, airflow, airflow, airflow. Clean your cards, and uh, add copper if you're burning hot mems. Uh, if you cap the power GPU, can draw. You can keep it cooler. Yeah, that's true. So sometimes uh, when the crypto market's crashing, 
mining profits are down, you can go into low power mode where you're getting less ash and you're also burning less watts just to be more efficient so your power bill is not through the roof, but you're still mining, right? That's the that's what they're talking about. Reduce the power, be more efficient, and uh, just don't burn hot and burn as much wattage. Yeah, tractor temperatures. Uh, make good use of cooling. I Cooling's a, a misnomer way. You want airflow. You want an air handler. Just putting cold air doesn't do much. You got to blow that hot air off the cards. Keep the flow through the, like my mine is open air in a tent, you could say. I need to keep that flow coming from low to high and exhausting out the 8-inch inline ducting with the inline fan. Yeah, make sure you're using good fan management in your case and that you have plenty of places for cool air to come in and hot air to go out. Oh, here we go. So that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, graphics card can last for years. Uh, even, it's, even if it's operating all day, every day, the critical thing to remember is that uh, temperature management will make a big difference. A card running all day at 65 degrees Celsius and a card running all day at 80 degrees Celsius will be different at the end of a few years. Yeah, well, uh, boy, it's going to be interesting to see how long these 3080 Ti's last. Is GPU mining still profitable? Right now, it sort of is a little bit. Depends on your power bill. Uh, yeah, and your heat management. You got to pay for those fans. You got to pay to get that heat out. Uh, you got to pay your electricity costs and stuff like that. And uh, side note on taxes, man, just do a, um, a sole proprietor and and keep track of all your equipment purchases, your membership, your subscriptions, your internet cost, and your electric bill because that becomes an expense. You don't have to be incorporated or anything. Just do sole proprietor and your accountant will write it off and deduct that as a, uh, you know what I mean, a um, loss item or a depreciating item on your equipment and goes against any gains you make uh, as income when you get mining payouts because that is treated as income as of 2021 taxes. And uh, with your electric bill, say you spend 3000 I'm just guessing, 3000 a year on electric or 4000 that is then an expense written off against your uh, profits on income. Not a tax advisor here, but just saying what I went through from my own experience. Oh, what else we got? Oh, we're 17 minutes in. All right. Can mining on a laptop damage, dam damage it? Um, well, I don't know. I have two laptops. Why? Well, I needed one for work, and I also was going to buy one anyway because I couldn't get GPUs at the time. Everything was high demand, high demand, high demand. I said, well, wait, I can get laptops with these uh, NVIDIA cards in it and start mining and get 32 mega hash. So I did it. And I got a Lenovo and I got a Dell and they're mining. And I'm also CPU mining them too. I am cooking these puppies because uh, they're money makers to me versus sitting in a corner. So I'm using them. And they're saying you shouldn't use laptop to mine crypto. It isn't worth the risk to your hardware when compared to the small amount of money you might make using laptop. I know. I can't resist it. I'm sorry. I have I have them at a TP setting, and I have fans under them and on them, blowing air across them to keep them cool. But I'm using them. Otherwise, you're just going to sit there. So why not use them? Anyway, that's all I got, man. Just a nice little break. A nice break from the crypto markets, watching the FUD, watching the fear, the blood in the streets. Yeah, I get sick of watching this every day. And I uh, just thought it'd be interesting to look at some other stuff. I am not buying any GPUs. I do not see myself buying GPUs. If you are buying GPUs, buyer beware because, yeah, how are you going to ROI those things? I do see a lot of YouTubers buying GPUs. Oh, great price now, great price now. Yeah, I know it's great for content, but you're not really making that much money in YouTube revenue to offset the cost of the um, card, and uh, you're not going to ROI that card based on Ethereum mining. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But again, everyone, it's their money, not my money, so I really don't care. I'm just making an observation. And people are throwing lots of money into the game with uh, racks and rigs and stuff that's not going to make them money. They're throwing money at, uh, you know, putting the stuff in sheds and stuff. It's like, that's expensive, guys. Running electric. I don't know. I get it. It's a hobby. But wow. Yeah, it is a hobby, I guess. I'm just pointing out I wouldn't do it right now because I want to make money. But if it's really your hobby and you're trying to make content, that's great. Love it. Do it. And uh, it's fun to watch. But anyway, that's all I got. Uh, yeah, clean your GPUs. <laughs> watch the temperatures. That's all I got. I mean, I'm out. Take care. I'll talk to y'all later.